Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about how to learn and study openings, and especially the difference between memorization and actually understanding the moves that you're playing. I got the idea for this video from Ben Johnson's new book, Perpetual Chess Improvement. I'm also quoted in this, so it's like pretty cool, you should probably check it out. He has pretty much an entire chapter about the best way to learn and study openings, and so many of the guests on Ben's podcast have said that it's so important to actually understand the moves when you are learning a new opening. And of course, this is easier said than done. That's a very abstract concept. So today we're just going to look at one line of an opening that I play, and I'm going to show you how exactly I understand the moves that I'm playing and how I go about doing that when I don't have a coach or somebody telling me what to do, a book, a course, something like that. So this opening line is a variation of everybody's favorite opening for the white pieces, the London system. So we start off with d4, black plays knight f6, we go for our London with bishop f4, and now black plays this very testing move in immediate c5. Now what does this move do? Well, it strikes at our center. We put a d pawn in the center and black doesn't want us to keep it there. If we take this supposedly free pawn, black's going to get some very quick development, some tactics, they're going to be able to take over the center pretty quickly and we'd actually just rather keep our D pawn there. So that's why it's usually not the best idea to take this pawn. The way we get into the line that we're going to be talking about today is with the move E3, just defending it. If black ever takes, we can just capture back. Everything's totally fine. And now we get into the guts of this variation, which is the weird looking move, knight to D5. And I've heard this called the crazy knight variation. It's kind of weird looking because Black is moving a piece twice in the opening, but the idea is that they're going after our really nice London bishop. They don't want to allow us to keep this bishop. Because this is the only piece we have developed, and because if we just leave it there and allow black to take and take back with a pawn, we're suddenly going to have doubled pawns, it's just not the best idea to keep our bishop on the f4 square. So usually the best case is just rocking it back. It's still nicely defended back here, keeping an eye on this really nice long diagonal, and we're all good. The knight seemingly has moved for no apparent reason at all. And now next we have boom, queen b6. This can be pretty scary if you are not expecting it. Black is being super aggressive right at the start of the game, moving pieces twice, bringing their queen out, doing all the things that you're not supposed to do, giving up pawns. But the idea here is pretty simple. They're going after the b pawn and in conjunction with this knight that has moved a little closer to the center of the board, the center of the action, there can be some very real threats if white doesn't know what they're doing. So there are some options here that lead to a relatively equal position for white, but one thing that black has already gotten out of the opening is forcing white to play a very sharp tactical line that most of the time London players aren't looking for. So that's another psychological aspect of the why behind these opening moves. Why are they breaking all these rules? is to get the person playing white out of their comfort zone. So white has some options here that, like I said, lead to a pretty equal position. Can immediately play the move b3, just defending the pawn that's under attack. I don't like this so much because it weakens this dark diagonal that's aimed directly at our king. And if white had our way, um, we'd also just rather play the c pawn forward instead of the b pawn, creating our typical London structure. But obviously that's probably not going to happen at this point. Another option that white has is moving the knight out to either a3 or c3, looking for possibly knight to b5, potential for trapping the queen if black doesn't know what they're doing. But in my opinion, if black has already gotten this far, they probably have a pretty clear idea of the typical responses that white will play here and how to break them down. So instead, I opt for a sharper line, which is actually to play the move c4. So black might calculate a few moves in advance here and say, okay, after I take the b pawn, white can't actually take the knight because they're going to be losing their rook. So after, you know, white moves their knight defending the rook, then black can move their knight and they are just going to be up a pawn with a queen sort of infiltrating the entire position. But that's actually exactly what we want to happen with a little bit of a twist. So after black takes our b2 pawn, we're actually not going to worry about our rook in the corner. We're just going to take the knight and allow black to grab our rook. And that's where we lock in the black queen in this corner. And suddenly the queen just has no way to escape. So now we're at the point where if black plays the wrong move, things can go downhill very quickly. So if black thinks, okay, I'm going to trade on the d4 square and get my queen out of here, right? It, it seems like this pawn is under attack twice. 
should be able to escape unharmed and potentially even up a couple points of material. But as soon as the C pawn takes, well, it has made way for our queen to come in and deliver back rank checkmate. So a better idea for black here is to attempt to bring this knight down, potentially down to b4 and try and go after this a2 pawn and escape with their queen and their life. But as soon as black plays this move, we're simply going to snap it off the board giving black doubled pawns on the side of the board and preventing that threat entirely. So black's only other hope here is to bring another attacker somewhere along this B file, potentially aiming at the B1 knight. And because we are pretty far away from defending it, that is just black's best hope to get their queen out of trouble here. But our idea is now to go as fast as we can to potentially trap that queen and not give black the chance. So there's not any quick way, even though black's queen is on the dark squares, for us to bring our dark squared bishop anywhere where it will be sufficiently defended and be able to also attack the queen, at least not anytime soon. So our real hope is to probably get a knight somewhere where it can attack the queen, maybe a knight on b3, or to quickly castle and then move this knight, block the queen's escape and have the rook looking at the queen. But if we can get a knight in exchange for the queen rather than the rook in exchange for a queen, that would be even better, especially because we're already down a rook. So our first idea is of course to bring the knight out. If we want it here, well, the best path for that will probably be through these three squares. So we'll move our knight out to f3 to start. And now black would really like to get a rook onto this b file as soon as possible, adding another attacker so that the queen has somewhere to escape. But if they do that right now, of course, we can just snap it off with our sniper bishop. So in order to prevent that, black needs to block our dark squared bishop. So the best move for black here is to play the move d6. And we have a few options here. All of them are good. We can castle. But my move of choice is just to continue with the very simple plan of bringing our knight over to b3. So we continue with knight to d2. And now black finally has the time to bring their rook onto b8, just in time for us to trap the queen with our knight. But since black has already taken our rook in the corner, they're pretty happy to sacrifice their rook in exchange for our knight, giving the queen a place to escape. We can capture with the a pawn, that's totally fine. But then the black queen is pretty quickly able to escape, give us a check and it's at the very least going to be a draw. So better is capturing here with the queen. And this is also good because it forces black's hand here. If they don't play the next move correctly, they're completely lost. They're going to for sure be losing their queen. And the move that they have to play is c4, seeming to give up a pawn, but of course, if we take it, then they win our knight and subsequently probably going to win our rook. So we have to drop the queen back. We can also give a check first, but it doesn't do too much in my opinion. And now again, black's only move to survive here is the move c3, just providing a space for the queen to hopefully go and they may be losing a pawn at the end of it all, but at least their queen is getting out alive. We of course cannot take this pawn even though it's attacked twice, because again, if we take like this, our knight is free for the taking and we can't take with the knight because then, well, we lose our king and that's just an illegal move. So instead we castle here and now it's pretty much the end of the line. Queen has to go to b2 and we can win this pawn now because the knight is protected. So we can take it with the queen. And after queen takes, knight takes. We have equalized, our opponent has double pawns on the side of the board and our pieces are going to be very active. It's going to take black a few moves to get their other bishop out, get their king castled if that's what they'd like to do. Meanwhile, our rook has this nice open file to play with. Our knight is in play. Our bishop will very quickly be in play if we can break in the center. Everything is great here. So just like that, that is our 16 move line that we've gone through and I've tried my best to explain the why behind each of these moves. And as I learned this line, that's what I was doing too. So how do you figure out these moves and the why when you're on your own, you don't have a book or a video telling you exactly what to do? Well, the best way is to use some kind of analysis feature and play through the moves yourself. If you're worried about a specific move like, oh, I, I understand that this is the move I'm supposed to play. The engine says it's plus two, but what if my opponent makes this move? Then play a few moves further in the line and see what the computer comes up with in order to refute that move that you've come up with for your opponent. A lot of my opening study has really just been trial and error. I will play through logical looking moves from my opponent's point of view and see how the computer refutes them and why exactly. It's usually pretty clear um, why the move that I have made that is not at the top of the list is a bad one after just a few moves into the line. So it takes a little bit of upfront work, but once you've got it down 
and you can import those lines into your opening database. It makes it really easy going forward when you are reviewing those lines because you will instinctively just remember the why. So now if I play through these moves with just a quick reminder of why we do each one, you'll probably remember the more in-depth explanation that I gave and it makes it just a lot easier to memorize. So D4, and the knight comes out, we've got the London system, black striking at the center, we protect our pawn, the crazy knight comes attacking our good bishop, we'll just slide it back, and now the queen comes going after the b-pawn, we don't care about our b-pawn, we'll go after the crazy knight, black takes, we take, black takes, and now the queen is trapped, and we hang on to our knight, knight comes out attempting to save the queen, we just snap that baby off the board, and double black's pawns in the process. Now we want to trap the queen in the corner, so we develop our knight, Black pushes a pawn to prevent our bishop from attacking the b8 square where the rook would like to go. We continue with our plan and the rook gets to b8 just in time to save the queen by sacrificing itself. We will take with the queen, not allowing uh, Black's queen to escape up the a-file. Now the only winning move, bringing a pawn in closer to defend the queen when she wants to escape. We will castle and now Black's trying to escape here. We get to win a pawn, win our pawn back. And after the final exchanges, we are 16 moves in, black has double pawns on the side of the board, and our pieces are really active. So when you're learning your opening lines, no matter how short or how long they are, this is a great way to review them, is just go through very quickly, explain, verbalizing to yourself in real words why exactly you're playing those moves, why your opponent is playing those moves, and I hope this helps you with the memorization component of learning a new opening. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and I'll see you soon.